The markets have been boring once again. People have lost interest in this space at this moment. And guys, I'm going to forewarn you that this is not the time that you should be sitting on your hands. This is the time where you should take your mouses, your hands, and you should be actively involved in preparing for your next trading steps. And if you guys want to know more about that, well, then make sure to stay tuned because I'm going to show you some evidence right here, right now, that all the noise is just fight. If you guys were watching my video yesterday, I did tell you this would be the chart that would change your life. Go watch it because you do not want to miss out on that chart that I made there for you. It took me a long time to make that chart, but it is well worth you guys going to see because you can see that there is a thesis about Bitcoin in terms of it being a massive long-term play. Guys, welcome back to the Crypto Bliss Show. I'm Kiara DeCast. Thank you for being here with me today. Once again, I truly appreciate every single one of you being here and much benevolent love to every single one of you. So thank you to all my subscribers. Truly appreciate you. Peace out and shout out to all of you. Um, all right. On Morales Money here today, guys, we have Tau, Lido, ICP, Maker, OKB, Pulse, Filecoin, um, and Mantle pumping. The rest of the market is still kind of bleeding. Injective is down, Pro is down, Tears down, Hex is down, Dodge is down, Casper's down, Ton's down. Guys, remember, these are good buying opportunities in those coins and those narratives. Let's move on to the cryptocurrency market cap. Today is $1.632 trillion, kind of up 0.1% for the day. Trading volume has diminished once again down to $56 billion. Manta Network is pumping. Zignity is pumping. Omnicat, Aleph uh, is pumping. Lisk is pumping. And Bitcoin is up 0.2% for the day. Just hanging on to that 40K level hardcore right now. Ethereum is sitting at 2,200. 23 BNB at 291, Solana at $87, XRP at 51 cents, Lido at 2222, Cardano at 47 cents, and AVAX at $30, guys. So, very interesting to see what's going on in the market cap. We're in the neutral territory, we're bouncing between 48 and 52 at the moment. So, there's not much more that we have to say about that. Now, there are a few things that I want to share with you on the news before I get to sharing the charts with you. But before I do anything, I do just want to give you guys for warning that this is on the median line of this channel here. OK, and on this channel, you can see that it's a long term channel since the bottom of the market um, and is pretty much been bouncing all the way up. Uh, if you look here, this breakout area was that target. I wouldn't be surprised if we re and check. So this was the target, just by the way, and we actually pumped up even further. So I just want you guys to know that actually, like up to a 60, 70 percent pullback from this area um, would be quite reasonable. So first. Uh, no, sorry, not not of the not of the entire move, but I'm just saying from this zone from here to here, 70% of that would be, I mean, look at this, we're about there anyway. So at the worst, you know, we're gonna hit the bottom of this box here at the 37,400 guys. I think that's about all we're going to see happen on the Bitcoin chart. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below if you guys are kind of feeling a very similar experience here at the moment. This is the Bitcoin halving, this vertical line. So we literally are coming up to that moment. And I wouldn't be surprised if we traded in this area here, bounced around. You know, guys, it's going to give you opportunities to take trades up and down, up and down, up and down until we actually get out of this uh, area and then break up. So essentially, my current move up here that I intended it for to get up to 55,000 has become invalidated. So now I will remove that for us. Um, and I will also then remove this because even though that will be the next level of resistance, once we do get up there, we are currently in more of a down sloping trend at the moment. Now, there is some stuff that I do want to show you in terms of similarities. And if you guys 
it, like in terms of the candles and where we're at at the moment. So if you guys want to check that out, make sure to stay tuned right to the very end. But I have some crazy news for you because the nine Bitcoin ETFs have bought 102,613 Bitcoin in just seven days of trading, guys. It took MicroStrategy 300 days to buy 100,000 Bitcoin. Wait till you see the FOMO kick in. I completely agree here. This is about to see some absolutely crazy stuff happen into the future of Bitcoin. And this is an incredible headline, just as uh, Bitcoin Archive says. Shout out to Bitcoin Archive. The SEC's Bitcoin ETF approvals have forever altered the global monetary system. Um, that is very, very, a very, very, very powerful article. Not only that, Tesla did not sell any of its Bitcoin in the Q4 of 2023 and still owns 9720 worth $385 million, guys. So only GBTC at the moment is selling their Bitcoins. But cool thing is just in... Bitwise becomes the first US Bitcoin ETF to publish the Bitcoin addresses of its holdings. So here is the ETF. Bitcoin in the trust is 11,858 Bitcoin, market value of about 465 million. And uh, Bitcoin per share is about that, which is pretty interesting. So nice. I like it. I think it's amazing. And um, you guys can see that Bitcoin miners made more revenue than Spotify last year. And this is according to ARK Invest, yes in ARK. So Bitcoin mining made $12.3 billion in revenue, whereas Spotify only made 11.8, eBay 10.1, Permis Paris 10.1, Chipotle 8.7, Hertz 8.5, and Hilton 8.3. So... Exceeding the revenue of large publicly traded companies. Isn't that very interesting, right? Guys, Bitcoin is literally about to explode. And then we we're just talking about the miners. Now, not only that, you've seen some fight about just in, uh, you know, Grayscale selling so much Bitcoin. They have sold more than 100,000 uh, Bitcoin now. Grayscale just sent another 19,200 Bitcoin worth 760 million to Coinbase. Duk, 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 duk. All right, so they are still continuing to sell, but their sell pressure is drying up and it's about to die. Okay. Um, and if you guys were listening to Carl from the Moon, his live show yesterday with Mr. M and Da Vinci, you heard Da Vinci say very much there that GBTC is in trouble because its model no longer works, especially considering that the ETFs have been launched. And that's why they decided to make the high fee so that they could maximize people getting or exiting their positions in the GBTC ETFs and moving their funds over to other alternative ETFs that are next to nothing in terms of fees or just buy your own Bitcoin. So just in the nine um, new Bitcoin ETFs are buying about 12,700 Bitcoin every day and only 783 new Bitcoin were issued uh, yesterday. So if they're buying 12,700 Bitcoin every day, only 783 new Bitcoin were issued in one day. That is crazy. They're buying 12,000 more Bitcoin than what are being mine every single day at the moment guys that is insane and just to give you some indication of what that looks like okay 12,700 divided by 783 they are gobbling up 16.2 times the daily supply at the moment guys and if they continue on their trajectory of gobbling up 12,000 um uh let's go 52 uh 52 times 5 that will give us 260 days of trading days okay uh times 12,700 if they continued at the same buying level they would buy in one year 3.3 million Bitcoin, guys. 3.302 3 
million Bitcoin. Would you like to let them own that much Bitcoin, guys? Because that's a ridiculous um, amount of the network. And they would do one of two things, hodl it to shit um, until the network just died and just that's it. Or they would actually dump tons on your ass at very important points and they wouldn't even have to sell everything to be able to control and manipulate the market. So what is inevitable? What do you guys think? I would like to know what you guys think down below because that's a freaking scary number if they collectively, nine of them own 3.3 million of the 18.5 million Bitcoin. That's insane, guys. They would literally grab up the entire supply um, that is pretty much remaining at the moment. Like, that's impossible, of course, but it's a scary thing to think about as to their purchasing power. And that is just in terms of that. Now, I just wanted to say something, okay? Because if they were to buy 3.3 billion Bitcoin over the course of one year, uh, sorry, 3.3 million Bitcoin over the course of one year, what kind of money would that actually be, okay? So let's go 3.302123. That is, that is, I mean, Jesus guys, let's copy that number and put it on the calculator because I can't even see it yet. Okay, boom. Uh, they would bring in $132 billion. Um, of liquidity into the ETFs. Now, keep this in mind when I show you the next article here, okay, because currently BlackRock and Fidelity hold more than 3.2 billion, okay? They're buying about $400 million Bitcoin on average every day. So once grape scales Bitcoin dries up, you know, there's nothing left to do, guys. Um, so 3.2 billion, okay, I'm going to just share with you. So I'm going to take the whole amount of money that they um, doing over the course of the year and divide it by the amount that they've done in one week, okay? 3.2 billion. Okay, that's a 41x potential on the current price of Bitcoin, okay? There's Kathy Wood's prediction of a $1.652 million Bitcoin. Guys, I, I, I can't repeat this much more to you. Get one Bitcoin. I don't own one Bitcoin, but I'm furiously buying one Bitcoin. And I'm making sure everybody around me is also buying one Bitcoin. Okay? Because this is an interesting number. Now, bearing in mind, this is all things equal and the price remaining the same at the moment. But the buying pressure, of course, will eventually push that price up. Now, one of the even more cool things about this is that I did show you now on my chart, okay, if you guys have been watching, make sure to like the video if you're enjoying it so far, that we have a pullback, that the potential level is about 38K, which we've already pulled back to just by the way. Look at that little wick down there, 38,523. Could that have been the bottom? One, because this is a buying candle. However, I do want to say something. That this was a buying candle too after a major dump that made a new low. Then we made a candle like this, which is essentially called a hammer candle. But it is at the end of a pattern, hopefully on a support level currently. Okay. But then you see the next candle kind of was low and then the next candle rolled over. Are we about to do the same thing right now and roll over for one more dump to the downside? My level, honestly, if we were to come down, my level is this level right here. Because look at those high, look at that um, incredible level right there, okay? Now that level is 38,000, okay? 37,900, 38,000, guys. So we haven't quite hit the 38,000 level. We tried to reach it, but we didn't quite. So if we do roll over, that's my potential target. Other than that, I don't think we're going to go much further than that. Uh, that's just my honest view. If you guys think 
any different, let me know down below. But everything is going according to plan, according to this chart. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen this chart, but 2016, we had a 62% below all-time high drawdown before the halving. Um, then we had, um, sorry, this is 80 days before the halving, okay, from the all-time high. Then 52% below the all-time high, okay, on 2020 cycle. And 2024 is currently 42% below the all-time high, okay? So everything is going according to plan, and the halving is in about 80 days, guys. So things from the halving point really start to pump. I mean, look at this. This was sideways capitulation before a pump. This was a, a freak accident black swan. But if that didn't happen, this probably would have sat sideways before we saw this kind of takeoff trajectory here. The same thing is busy unfolding here at the moment, guys. What do you think about that? Now, some of the news here from Invest Answers is this is the ETF eight day, um, day eight update. Now, bearing in mind, eight days was like two days ago. Bitcoin ETF fund flows eight days just now. Yesterday said the bottom. Um, yesterday said the bottom was close. Market rebound indicates that as grayscale selling slows down. The bad news is that grayscale is still dumping, but slowing a lot. Two, BlackRock is slowing a bit. Fidelity is holding strong. The good news is that BlackRock has 44,000 BTC, uh, AUM now, Fidelity has 40,000. The majority of sell-off in, off involving FTX, uh, which completed day eight today, day nine should be a lot less. ETFs absorb all the 106, uh, 101.6 thousand from Grayscale and have grown by an additional 21,100 BTC in eight days. Exactly. The ETF alone are sucking in 15x the daily Bitcoin supply created, i.e. 134,000 versus 900. That's what I've just explained to you guys. So um, I hope you guys are enjoying this because you know, Bitcoin HODL visualized the new ETF overcame GBTC release of 101k BTC by 21k BTC net. Uh, they absorbed 122 BTC in eight days. So here's FBTC, IBIT. So um, this is uh, Fidelity, uh, owned now more than BlackRock. Then you've got BitB, ARC uh, is the fourth biggest. Uh, BTC Co, Valkyrie, look at all of this, guys. Net gain and then GBTC selling the shit out of it. I mean, I'm sure this was absolutely planned, of course, guys. Now, I hope you guys have been enjoying this. I would absolutely love for you guys to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. And please give the video a thumbs up, you know, guys, that really helps the channel to push my content out to more people that need to know about this stuff. Now, before I show you the last video, let's go over and draw to my chart. We broke this. We re This was essentially a fake out. We tried. We failed. Okay. It didn't work. Um, but I do want to indicate to you that I have shown you previously that this was the start and the, this was the beginning of last year. This was the beginning of last year. So if we've had a bit of a pump to start off the year, why would we not have a bit of a dump, right? I believe that we're going to end up doing something like this coming soon and then carrying on something like this. So I wouldn't be surprised if we kind of, <coughs> excuse me, had the same overlay of pattern from here, kind of pulling up this way. So that's a long time that it took. It's a whole year from there to there, guys. Why would it not take a whole nother year to go from there to break the all-time high, which is what I explained and expressed to you guys in my video here yesterday. If you didn't watch it, go check it out because it will change your life if you go and watch that video. It will make you feel more comfortable and relaxed um, about where we're actually at at the moment. So, uh, you know, don't be fooled out of your Bitcoin, okay? I do just want to go and say to you, I'm going to show you something very specific. This is not... Um, so, from this breakout point, okay? I would like to draw the breakout point, okay, where we had this level, okay, so that you guys can see 
where the potential 618 is on Bitcoin. And as we know that Bitcoin does not like being too far away from its 618 level, okay? And as you guys can see, the 618 level is actually up here at 42,368. And right now, we're actually bouncing off the 382 um, and the 50 level. We're under the 50. So if we do come down, I mean, the next possible level is that 36K level, which is actually at the bottom of this triangle. But if even if we come down there, guys, at the worst case scenario, look at this, 31,800. I have said this to you guys before, okay? I don't think it's going to happen. That's what I'm saying. I don't think, okay? But as a trader and an, a, a, as a chartist, you really just got to continue to look at the charts. We're down sloping. Until we get up above this, okay, we need to get back up above the 68K level. And essentially, we would like to see us get back up here to the 0.786 level. So um, we all can see those charts and what is going on. So for now, this is a resistance line. And this currently is the support line. And we are somewhat making some sort of wedge pattern once again on the chart okay so a breakout of this target would be all the way back up here at the kind of the 46 45 and a half to 46 thousand level um so that's pretty easy and simple and that's why i'm still going to remain in my trade i'm going to uh, dca after today's candle close um i will dca into uh more into my bitcoin position I have been exited out of all of my trades. I got out of everything because the market um, just wasn't uh, doing me any justice, as you guys know. And as I showed you this on the chart yesterday, this is exactly what it is that I've been doing too. So I would like to just zoom in ever so much here so that you guys can get a, a really good indication here um, as this uh, drop wick down pull back up roll over roll over drop pull down wick down chuck chuck are we going to roll over again because we actually are under a resistance level so we may pull down here if that is the case i have a buy entry down here and i will move my stop loss underneath the 36k level under the box because again that's where i think we could come i said underneath here so this 35 on a 30, 35,500 levels where I would actually put my stop loss. But I do want to say that the RSI is uh, starting to pull up. A bit more buy volume actually came in here in this area. Um, and you, as you can see here, since the ETF was launched, there really wasn't a lot of buy volume. And that's because the sell volume pressure from GBTC kept us down. Okay. So not only that, we had this ask jack so guys make sure you guys are using my buy, uh, buy bit link down below and my bit flexing down below you can get up to um nearly 90 uh nearly um a hundred thousand dollars in bonus profits go check my links down below um i don't have a bitcoin trade here i actually got stopped out of that trade so i lost that one and that's okay i'll put more in there and start again but I just want to go and show you this video because Strike CEO tells Yahoo Finance Jamie Dimon was Jeffrey Epstein's banker after JP Morgan CEO bashes Bitcoin. Let's go and listen to what he actually says here, guys, because I agree with Jack Mauler's, uh, uh on this one. Let's go and hear. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brad. Um, what do I think? about Jeffrey Epstein's banker being concerned that a distributed, decentralized, open public money could potentially be used for bad things, sitting on a ski resort in Davos. I don't really care. I don't know why anyone cares, right? I mean, that guy knows uh, when money's used for bad things. So I, it's a weird opinion of his. And my pet rock was up, as you said, 160% last year. Uh, it performed well against uh, the dollar. So I don't know. I don't really care what that guy has to say about Bitcoin. I don't know why anybody does. When you think... So if you look at what he's actually saying, it is completely irrelevant and if you guys went to watch my video yesterday i'll leave it up pinned in the comments for you i pinned in the cards for you 
you you guys will see you'll feel more comfortable and more relaxed because you shouldn't give two rocks about what Jamie Dimon says. Instead, look at what he's actually doing, okay? Which is buying MicroStrategy, buying a whole bunch of Bitcoin in different ways behind your backs over the years. So, guys, he's trying to fight Bitcoin while GBTC um, uh, is happening. I mean, his comments are ridiculous about how. So when it gets to 21 million Satoshi is just going to appear out of nowhere and like close it down. Like, I mean, w w like that is, that is like, I mean, that's very childish from the world's biggest banker. So it's just interesting to see what he's saying. Think about Bitcoin and transactions that we're, we're seeing. And, and a lot of the focus, at least coming into last year too, was not just what the ETF approvals would look like, but what also the utilization from here would look like moving out of the, the crypto winter. What type of utilization are you seeing? Uh, I mean, first of all, Bitcoin's this open public digital infrastructure for the world. So you see utilization all over planet Earth for all sorts of different things, right? Anyone can do whatever they want with it, which is part of the beauty and part of the attraction. I personally think that the killer use case we'll see over the next few years is the fact that all 8 billion human beings on the planet face fiat debasement. That means that their government's local currency loses value persistently. And debt, global debt to GDP is what, 360% right, right now? So... I mean, everyone has to own something else. And I think the killer use case over the next few years is going to be owning something that they can't make any more of. And so that's why I think Wall Street's attracted to it. That's why I think you've seen a price run up is because, I mean, even gold being bullish in the face of a hawkish Fed, the world is concerned with the treasury and the bond market. The world is concerned with the debt that governments have accrued without any growth. And they found this thing that's free to hold, that's scarce, that you can put in your brain. And it's just the killer app. It's the best expression of fiat debasement that literally everyone on the planet has to face. So that to me is the killer app. And then, it, you know, people make payments with it. People do all sorts of stuff with it because uh, there's no central governing party to tell them not to, which is beautiful. It's pure humanity. Well, Jack. Wow. He said that so perfectly. And if we go and look at the global debt to GDP ratio, let's go and see what it is, guys. Because actually, you can see 22 uh, in 2022, it was 238%, guys. But now I'm pretty confident that it's like rocketed past that. So, um, we just need to go here. No, okay, don't worry about that. Okay, but you guys can see here. I mean, that's massive. Oh, that's a PDF. That's why. I don't want a PDF. I just want to see what it is. Um, but guys, IMF blog, chart of the week. Global debt is returning to its rising trend. There you go. Public debt, household debt, non-financial corporate debt. Okay. So this is private debt. This is public debt. It is increasing, guys. 22 was 238. 29 was 229. It is increasing every single year, okay? And it is going to continue to do that. And that's why you guys need to know that this is very important. It's Johnny here. It's good to see you. I'm curious to get your perspective then on regulations. There's been lots of talk about what exactly that is going to look like, whether or not that would be a bullish thing for the industry, whether or not it's going to hold the industry back. Where do you stand on regulation? And I guess, what are you expecting to hear from lawmakers, to hear from regulators here in the U.S. this year in terms of the movement that we could potentially see? Yeah, so to be clear, me personally and my company, we are a Bitcoin company. Yeah. I am a Bitcoiner. I think crypto is a load of garbage. I think it's generally a distraction to what this technology and this movement represents. And Just to give you guys a bit of context, this is what he actually says about Ethereum and other cryptos. Uh, he is a Bitcoin maxi. He does love Bitcoin. I do agree with his statement about Bitcoin. Um, although I do see use cases for other cryptos myself personally. If he doesn't, that's okay. Everybody has their own views and their own, and own opinions and they have their own risk appetites. And is here to change. And so how the world is going to sort out the fact that 
some kid named Vitalik Buterin printed a lot of coins in his basement and then pre-sold them to people and has been promising all sorts of crazy things that have never happened. I don't know. Is that a security? But I, I guess the point is, I don't care. Everyone knows that Bitcoin has regulatory clarity, that Bitcoin is now officially on Wall Street, that Bitcoin is distributed. It works. Its monetary policy has never changed. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to change the world through Bitcoin and push Bitcoin a as far as we can as humanity and society. So the regulation on, I think, altcoins are arbitrages on this trend. I don't think they'll be around, you know, by the time I die. I imagine, you know, what what is Dogecoin going to do for society over the next 20 years? Come on, what are we talking about? So I, I guess I don't really care. Bitcoin uh, has the clarity it needs. And uh, I think it's going to be a $5, 10 $20 trillion asset over the next 18 months. Jack, you mentioned. Five, ten, tri 20 trillion dollar asset over the next 18 months, guys. Did you just hear what I said? Because if you go and look at my Bitcoin calculations, okay, currently Bitcoin is only sitting at 785 billion. So if we were to do uh, 20 trillion, 20 trillion divided by 785 billion. That's going to give us an approximately 25x from here now. So times by 40,000. Okay. So Jack Mauler's, Kathy Wood, Arthur Hayes, myself, um, Scaramucci, all of the cryptopreneurs in the space are all calling a million dollar Bitcoin. We were saying by 2030. But Arthur Hayes, Jack Maulers, I mean, these guys are talking about 750000 to a million dollar Bitcoin this cycle in the next 18 months. Do you guys think that's possible? If you enjoyed this video, smash the thumbs up. Remember to hit my Bybit link so you guys can come and trade with me. You guys can see here's my trade. I'm down 24% of my trade right now. I will enter in. I do have more entries into my position. I will enter in as we climb down. Even if we pull down here, I will enter into the position, lower my entry level, and I would have bought tons of Bitcoin for when we essentially start to make the crazy run for the Bitcoin halving moment, which is not too far around the corner, um, as you guys can see. So, guys, I really hope that you have enjoyed this content with me here today. And I truly appreciate you all being here with me. Much love beautiful blessings and i hope to see you guys on the next one because that's when the halving is coming very very soon much love take care see you later.